Well, thank you, Mr. Bierbaum, for your kind words. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure and a honor to share a few thoughts with you on the interaction between China and Germany from the point of a German, working for, as advertised, the most internationalized Chinese bank, the Bank of China. During the next minutes, I will speak about our mission, the way we support the internationalization of China and its currency, future prospects, and last but not least, the necessity of a prudent risk management. In my role as Managing Director of Bank of China in Germany, I'm also the Chief Risk Officer of the bank, which is partly the reason for my hair turning gray. Okay, um, the increased burden of regulatory issues might contribute even more to this effect. Bank of China was founded in 1912 as the Bank for Currency Exchange and Trade Finance, i.e. the international aspect is a crucial part of our DNA and one reason why we became the first systemic relevant bank out of the so-called emerging markets. Given this background, it does not come as a surprise that we are expanding our international network continuously, now being present in around 40 countries, and this, that this international competence is an important part of our strategy going forward and our competitive edge. We can build bridges, and I will speak a lot about bridges going forward. We can build bridges in the development which is irreversible and which will lead to more and more influence of China in the world. And here are two messages incorporated. Firstly, it is amazing that some key decision makers within corporates still do not involve China and its influence sufficiently in their strategy and thinking. Unbelievable, but true. Secondly, building bridges is the key in the future development as there are cultural gaps to overcome. Well, how do we support Chinese corporates doing business or intending to do business in Germany? Well, it's pretty easy. We finance them as simple as that, be it with corporate loans or products related to trade finance, treasury, treasury business or cash management solutions. Again, like a bridge, we are at the starting point in China with more than 10,000 branches and here in Germany with offices in Frankfurt, Hamburg, Düsseldorf, Berlin, Munich and next Stuttgart. And close to 80% of the business is originated in China. Currently, we are working to increase the share of business originated in Germany in order to achieve a more balanced portfolio. This is a very natural strategy, no magic, no magic at all actually, and follows again the picture of the bridge. We have set up teams who speak Chinese, as the vast majority of my colleagues do. Uh, I do not speak Chinese, I'm sorry for that. And my CEO recently asked me, well, have you improved your Chinese? And I said to him, no, I'm sorry, I have more, more important things to do. I have to take care of the risk. Mm -hmm. He was not so pleased, but I thought it's a good excuse. Well, and these um, Chinese-speaking colleagues help, of course, the customers in doing their business with China. Being appointed as the first Remimbi Clearing Hub uh, in Europe as of June 19th last year, we are also supporting other banks in Europe and corporates in executing their business in a more efficient way. The real economy can now do their business on the same day in the national language, which is not Chinese, under national law and at lower costs. And the Remimbi Clearing Cup serves as a catalyst, generating more liquidity and consequently more and or deeper products. It's a 
self-fulfilling prophecy. And um, well, uh, most of you have seen the uh, cooperation with the Deutsche Börse and uh, two Chinese um, stock exchanges. So there will again come some volume and liquidity here into the market in Germany. And as, uh, as I said, with the Deutsche Börse and with the RQ fee, we will see more remimbi denominated products such as the issuance of bonds and the link to capital market products currently not available in Germany, including equity investments. Coming to an end, oh, not really, but close to an end, let me share some thoughts about risk management. Do you really believe that an analyst grown up in Chinese business environment with its long tradition would follow the same approach in evaluating a risk as someone grown up in Germany? Do you really think the instruments they use would be the same? The road they take in reaching a conclusion would not differ? Of course. Different experiences and transitions come into play, and that is good. Life is never black or white. Personally, I'm very grateful to my Chinese colleagues who open my eyes and my mind and sometimes guide me to a decision which I would not have made without their valuable input. Of course, even within one bank, the line of argumentation does differ, obviously again within a set frame. And of course, we do not want to repeat the mistakes of so many foreign banks in German history that ended up with taking the risks the local banks did not want to have in their own books. That's, that's a very long history, it's nearly a tradition. But without somebody building bridges, it is also the other way around. If you do business with Chinese corporates, so, a fresh, a new, a solid, and a trusted way of judging rich is very welcomed. Let me conclude by summing up my main beliefs. China will become even more important in the years to come, and decision makers have to find answers to this fact. But the interaction will also always require people who are building bridges to close the existing, existing cultural gaps based on mutual respect. This can be an advisor, a fine bank, but also a rating agency owned by Chinese shareholders. Thank you very much for your attention. Are there any uh, questions for Mr. Meist? If that is not the case, I would have one for you, uh, Mr. Meist, especially that you said, da, do Chinese, or is the, the analytical approach for a Chinese bank a different one, and you said you're becoming richer through your colleagues from China bringing in their you know, knowledge and experiences. Can you elaborate a bit further on the very long term, the risk assessment and the risk analysis, how that could be, you know, you know, give us some, you know, practical example how, how that could differ, you know, the analytical approach for risks that are to be underwritten with a very long time horizon. Um, well, it, it, it starts with the fact that all the, the credits we have um, to get approval from in China are uh, written in Chinese. <laughs> so you have the, the, the language, uh, the cultural language gap. Uh, we write in English, but it's translated into Chinese. This is something uh, where we really have to work on in, in the future, that we have more and more Chinese colleagues in the head office who fully understand uh, English. So it's a little bit, uh, with translation, you lose a lot of messages. It's, it's always, if you are not a native speaker, you always lose some of your messages. So th that's one important part. Uh, the other part is the structure. The structure of a, of a Chinese application is, is completely um, set up in a different way um, we would do as, as European. Uh, a is not A there, A is maybe B or, or D with, with a Chinese um, structure, the way of thinking. 
Um, I mentioned the way my colleagues argue. This is also um, very, very different. Then you have, um, in Germany or in Europe, you have the culture that the analyst um, really speaks up and defends his case. This is um, in, in a Chinese bank where hierarchies are very important. Um, well, well if, if I say as chief risk officer, I would like to have this risk in our book, uh, you can bet on the result uh, of the CIC meeting. So um, this is completely different from what I have experienced uh, at Commerzbank of Fortis, where there has always been uh, big discussions and fight. And you, in the Chinese culture, if the hierarchy says, um, I would like this to be considered this way, it will work this way. And on a more technical aspect, um, what we lack is a little bit um, the, the cash flow analysis. This is something where you definitely can uh, pop up your analysts um, in your reporting opposite um, China. So these are a couple of, of um, areas um, basically, mix, mix, or basically based on um, different cultures. Um, but if you sit together with the colleagues, it's, it's always fun and uh, you end up in the result uh, the chief risk officer wants. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>